my mom, I told her as we were doing an accent video, she was, you're gonna make us all sound like Fargo. And I was like, well. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's long hair, clean shaven Dom from fall of 2021. Uh, here can touch the last the video you're about to watch. So this is the accent challenge and it's, it's kind of the lost Folkwise video. So we recorded this video in about September of 2020. Um, a few things happened afterward. Uh, you know, people got their PhD, people's jobs got switched around. We started a Twitch stream. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of changed how how busy we were going to be week by week. But there's a couple reasons why I wanted to make sure this video got out before October. Uh, number one, it's got Caroline and John in it, who are members of the team who haven't appeared on camera much. But this is like a great introduction to Caroline and John. You're going to be seeing them a lot if you see us in person at the American Folklore Society. That is October 18th to 23rd online and in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. If you are going to the American Folklore Society 2021 annual meeting, we'll be there. If you're not, we'll be streaming almost every night. So tune into our Twitch channel to watch us live streaming interviews with folklorists, games with folklorists, or if you're there in person, come find us. We'll have merch for sale. I mean, we have, we have, we have merch for sale in the Big Cartel, uh, link in the description, but We'll have merch for sale, we'll be hanging out, we'll be playing games, we'll be interviewing people, come see us in person. Caroline and John will be at the conference with us, so I wanted to get them on a video as soon as possible. And two, even though this hasn't aired yet, this is the origin of a couple of jokes that we do tell all the time around Folkwise. Uh, for example, there is something we make fun of Jared for all the time. It's Duck Duck Goose related. Um. That's in this video. We've brought up at least twice on stream. Uh, some of you will, some of you will recognize that this is the origin of that joke. But you know, our uh, lots changed since this video. I mean, our setups have changed. Our webcams, our microphones. You're watching a video recorded on Zoom in 2020. But I'm so glad you finally get to see the accent challenge. All right, I will return you to medium hair mustache Dom. Welcome back to Folkwise, everybody. I'm your host Daisy, and I'm Baby. And today we're talking about sounds. Daisy, are you referring to dialect and accent and how they can help designate which folk group we belong to? Thanks for helping translate. <laughs> yes, yes. Today we are talking about accents and dialect, how we communicate and how sometimes it sounds different. Um, so what do we want people to know about this? Why are we all together here talking about accent and dialect well i mean accent and dialect is a really cool and important way to know that you actually belong to a folk group i feel like we hear it all the time but we don't realize that it connects us to particular groups or regions and today we're going to talk about regions um, and the regions that we're connected to so why don't we have the group introduce themselves and tell us where they're from my name's Caitlin Kinney and I'm from Virginia. I'm from, uh, well, like the Northwest part of Virginia out near the Appalachian Mountains from, I live in the Shenandoah Valley and um, I'm technically a Virginia transplant. My parents are not from Virginia. My daddy's from Texas and my mom's from Ohio. Hey y'all, I'm Caroline. I'm from uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, but my dad is from Western North Carolina, just outside Asheville, so in the mountains. And my mom is from Eastern North Carolina, right near the Virginia border. But I'd say I probably get more of my accent from her side of the family than my dad's. But either way, North Carolina through and through. I'm Anna and I am from Ohio, um, grew up in Ohio and spent some time recently in Pennsylvania and um, in Harrisburg and in Philadelphia. Um, and then recently moved to California. Um, I've always felt like I don't have an accent, um, which I've learned is, you know, not the case, but um, that's partly because of the area in which I grew up, but also because my parents are transplants to the area from Buffalo. So I feel like they were very um, aware of like uh, the accents that they were like um, using in, in conversation. So um, I remember my parents telling me, for instance, to um, 
not say things certain ways because it didn't sound right. Um, so I feel like I've like really tried, like since I was a kid, to perfect the non-accent accent, which is what I had viewed as like the Ohio accent. I'm Jared Schmidt, and I am born and raised in rural Southwest Minnesota. Um, I've moved across the northern part of the country. I like to kind of joke that I'm um, I've grown up at about an hour away from I-90 most of my life. Um, so I've lived in Iowa, Montana, and Wisconsin, and I'm a current transplant to um, Oregon. And um, no matter where I've moved, my monophthongal vowels have followed with. I'm actually Your what? Can you say that again? Can you say it? Yeah, again? Uh, my monophthongal vowel. Um, it's a long, flat vowel sound, like the O's, the A's. Um, that's the kind of sound that the upper Midwesterners, which I'll be representing as well broadly, are um, known for, don't you know? All right, I'm John. I'm representing the great state of New Jersey. Not New Jersey, that's what people from Staten Island say, uh, but rather New Jersey, which is the only place in the country where people talk normal. Um, <laughs> lived all around the Mid-Atlantic. Everyone else has these weird accents. I don't understand it. They don't say coffee. They don't say soda. I don't, I don't get what you people are talking about half the time. Uh, my name's Morgan. Um, I am, grew up in Michigan. But my, both my parents are from South America. Well, my dad's from South America. My mom's half from South America and half from the East Coast. Uh, so I kind of have that sort of same as Anna where I didn't really think I had an accent. But I also kind of just picked up stuff partially because my dad would pronounce things wrong. So I didn't quite have a good idea of how things were supposed to be pronounced other than my surroundings. And as such, from moving from Michigan to Philadelphia and now to California, I've just basically picked up ways to say words that I think are fun or cool. And I'm Dom. I was born in New Jersey. My dad's from New Jersey, but I moved to Ohio when I was little, where my mom's side of the family's from. Uh, so I mostly have an Ohio accent, but with some like dialect loan words from New Jersey uh, and, uh, and my dad. Um, and right now I live on the Eastern shore of Maryland. So I have some, uh, I've, I've picked up some things I've noticed from this very uh, distinct uh, Eastern Shore accent. And I'm Daisy, and you already know that. But what you don't know is that I'm going to represent the Southern California accent because I was born and raised uh, in Ventura. I love Ventura. It's pretty. Dom, do you want to illuminate a little bit about what the difference between accent and dialect are? before we just test ourselves? So an accent is a distinct way of pronouncing words or pronouncing a language. I think what we as folklorists want to get across is how accents are, uh, we would say, associated with your folk groups. So associated with what groups you identify with, whether you have an American accent, like all of us compared to somebody from New Zealand or Scotland, or if you've got a regional accent, which we were breaking down our different uh, regional American English that we sound like, uh, some other social group, you know, uh, I, I've seen a lot in like the recently online about people having their customer voices, which is like, uh, like the service industry voice that you talk to customers with. I think another big thing that we want to stress in this, of course, you may not have noticed, uh, you may not notice your own accent and you may think like, oh, I don't have an accent, but everyone has an accent and it's like an unconscious kind of offline way of marking yourself as a part of a linguistic tradition or as a part of the word we're going to keep using a folk group. All right, so we're gonna go in to testing our accents right now, and I'm gonna start us off with the word theater. 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 Yeah, I didn't realize till I said it out loud that mine's got like a D in it. Mine's theater. Yeah. Theater. theater. Yeah, mine's kind of a, a, a softer T D sound too. Theater. It's theater. Yeah. Caitlin, would you say theater again? Theater. You, you said I mean, it. You said it differently the first time. I did. <laughs> yeah, you did. I felt like the the emphasis is on the eat. Mine is just theater, like theater, <laughs> like I, I don't know. The first time I went to go visit my folks down in Texas, my aunt Dina was talking about going to the theater, 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah. My mom Slapping says it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. good. Next one? Yeah. Salmon. 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 But my mom says salmon and it drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I say salmon. Yeah. Uh, next word is caramel. Okay, I'm the pretentious one who calls it caramel, and that's just me. I will, at one point, I tried to, <laughs> I tried to make myself say caramel, and then I just couldn't. This <laughs> sounds so wrong. My partner so, just shakes her head every time. She's like, why? I'm like, because there's, that's how you say it. The, so um, here's the thing, though. Caramel is like a caramel apple, or, but, or caramel sauce, caramel flavoring. A caramel is a yes. candy. Yes, correct. There is a, there are <laughs> things like you don't. Like, I'm going to die on this caramel flavored hill. The, the default, the default for me is caramel, but a caramel is like a, a like a chewy candy. Mm -hmm. Well, then they should spell it's it differently. You, it's what you melt to make the caramel apples. I'm you with you, Jerry. Caramel? It's caramel yes. all the time. Thank so you, you John. Melt caramel to make caramel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, you know, I'm gonna be similar. I'm gonna be similar to Jared and John here, and uh, it's it's caramel. Unless Ooh, we're I, talking about Carmel, Indiana. Unless we're talking about different. the suburb of okay. Indianapolis, Carmel. No. Okay. So that doesn't have an A though. I wanted to say caramel in the past because it's how commercials said it. I feel like um, they'd be like the caramel on the new, like whatever the, mm. yeah, chocolate. So to me, it just is associated with like some sort of advertising, like, like Milky um, Way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, that, that doesn't make sense of like the institution's influence on how we speak. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I feel like mm -hmm. that must be an influence on some of these, at least, like mm -hmm. for especially for people who have maybe the less um, distinctively newscaster accent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should we do the next one? Water. 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 My mom says water, though, which I've always thought is really weird for a Southerner. Water. That's kind of like the wash. Once yeah. again, I say it normally. Everyone else doesn't. Water. I, I love. I love when people say water. Uh, can you say? Can you say water tower for me? Water tower. Okay. Ooh. You don't. You don't. Uh. It, I've. I've heard. I've heard. Uh. I've heard it get all the way clipped down to water tower, but. Water tower. That's that's more out in Maryland <laughs> than New Jersey. Um, the next one is data. 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 <laughs> data. 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 And the character's name is Data. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not really an accent. That's just, you know, that's just a personal <laughs> name. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a first that's name. A that's a proper noun. <laughs> All right. Next one is Ruin. 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 Ruin? Ruin. Ruin. Yeah, I'm going to the ruins. Yeah, it, it's somewhere in between. Like, it's not ruin and it's not ruins. Yeah, for me, it's I'm like going a, to the ruins. It's, it's ruin. <laughs> Mayonnaise. 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 No. Mayonnaise. 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 We got a mayonnaise. 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 That's a mayonnaise. <laughs> That's cool. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. I I I think I gotta know about syrup. <laughs> oh yeah. Syrup. Okay, first off, syrup. Okay, first off, Caroline, please say that again. I gotta know about syrup. Okay, that's what I thought I heard. I just wanted to hear it again. Okay. I say syrup, yeah. I syrup. say syrup too. I say syrup. 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 Yeah, like syrup, like, like you're searing a steak. Syrup. Yeah. Syrup, yeah. Caitlin, can you say this one uh, uh, that is uh, a legal professional? How do you pronounce that? Uh, lawyer. Okay. What? Lawyer. Um, 
Oh, wait, did you say, did I hear, I'm, I'm trying to get so somebody, that's Caroline. I'm um, trying to get okay. somebody to say lawyer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. lawyer. Which is objectively lawyer. the way it's written, and I don't know why I don't say lawyer, I say lawyer. Lawyer. Oh no, it's lawyer. Okay. You're, you're <laughs> the only one who's right. So what's the difference again between accent and dialect? So dialects are different from accents because they focus usually on different words um, for the same object or thing um, rather than the different pronunciation of the same word. So like accents, dialects form through different social groups, class, occupation, um, and something you're more familiar with and what we've been talking about throughout this entire video region. So like Don was talking about earlier, dialect is kind of like your regional dictionary. So my first question is, what do you call the kind of spider or spider-like creature that has an oval-shaped body and extremely long legs? Daddy long legs. I was going to that legs. one. It's daddy long legs. Granddaddy long legs. Daddy yeah. long legs. Miller. Granddaddy long legs. Ooh, yep. granddaddy long legs. You've added an extra generation yep. somehow. Yeah. Granddaddy long legs. I've literally yeah. never heard this. I've Are there any legs. regular daddy long legs or no, just granddaddy. <laughs> that's, yeah. more I, that's what we called them as kids and I mean they're all over my grandparents' house. So we used to like shove sticks down the holes cuz they're the, I mean, <laughs> like sometimes we'd call them daddy long legs, but it was always just understood as an abbreviation for oh, granddaddy long legs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. long legs. Ah. <laughs> They're G daddy long legs. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to point out that there was no ever any grandmother long legs because no. the patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> the patriarchy. <laughs> I got a question. What, what do you call it when question? people slow down while driving to see why people are pulled over in accident? Bookie lures. Rubber necking. Rubber necking. Rubber necking. Rubber rubber necking. I've heard that one too. Okay. But they're a lure. The you correct answer is Pennsylvania driver. Oh! oh! Wait, I have a, I have an ans I have a question though related to um, John's. So, um, do you know what a uh, Jersey slide is? This is a thing that Philly people taught me, not New Jersey people. <laughs> a what? Say that again. The Jersey slide. Okay. Um, no. Uh, so in Philly, people refer to when you're rudely cutting across a bunch of lanes um, as a Jersey slide because you have to do that to get off the highway a lot <laughs> um, versus the South Philly slide, which is where you do rolling stops because there's a stop sign at literally every block and they're tiny blocks. You so. see, I, heard, I grew up hearing the rolling stops called California stops. Uh, me too, and I'm from uh, California, California Roll, I've Why? heard that. Why? I've heard, heard people call that California Roll here in Oregon as well. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard that too. Oh, okay. That's a stoptional. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like stoptional. That's good. Okay. Uh, I got one. Yeah. Okay, go what do you call your grandparents? Grandma and Grandpa? Yeah, Grandma and Grandpa. I have my Grammy, Nana, and Farfar was my grandpa, and that's a Swedish thing. Mm -hmm. It's father's I've got, father. Uh, I've got so, no Ds. I got no Ds. I'm Grandma and Grandpa, except for like my, uh, uh, f I, for a while, my Ital well, that's my mom's side of the family, but the Italian side of the family uh, was my, uh, my poppy. And my nanny, but she was my. Eventually, she was my 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 grandma. But yeah, I did always call him Poppy. My my dad, um, my dad's side of the family is very German, and he always referred to his grandma and grandpa as Oma and Opa. Ah, uh, Oma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's my partner's uh, grandparents too are Omi Opa. So mine, um, I only ever knew like while I was alive my grandmother's, and it was. Nana on my dad's side and Mama B because her name was Rebecca and went by Becky on her on my mom's side. But um, I think what's more interesting is that my so my mom goes by Mimi 
And it was a whole thing when my brother gave her grandchildren to be like what she was going to be called. And she like was set on not having a name that was going to be like old sounding. Mm -hmm. Um, So it was between Gigi for gorgeous grandma and ended up with Mimi somehow. Um, So it's Mimi and Pop is my dad. Mm-hmm. for my my nieces and nephews but yeah i've just got uh nana and mama b i lived in i lived in kentucky for a year and heard a lot about people's uh mamas and papas as well hmm. papa's a fruit the that's a pow like a paw paw tree yeah not a papa a a a yeah. You're, you're asking someone with the wrong accent to describe the difference. A paw paw and a paw paw are different. Okay, I heard okay. that one. Very I good distinction. Got that one. In my family, we all say tata and abuela. Mm. Mm. That's just a nice. Chilean thing. So I have one. Um, what do you recall a device which, when you push a button or turn a lever, delivers water to you? Oh yeah, a faucet. Oh. Like you're drinking out at a school. Like situation. drinking out of school. Faucet. Water fountain. Drinking water fountain. fountain. It's a drinking yeah. fountain. It's a water so, fountain. Drinking fountain. Drinking fountain. Water fountain. Okay, in Wisconsin, mm-hmm. a lot of them call it a bubbler. What? Wisconsin yes. and Rhode Island, right? Are the t- I think it was some Wisconsin Rhode Island. Yeah, so yeah. it's called a bubbler because um, in Wisconsin because the Kohler company made water fountains. I call it water fountain as well. Mm-hmm. That actually, when you turn the, the nozzle or push the button, the water shoots straight up out of a basin. Mm-hmm. Um, and it shoots straight up, and with the when it comes down, like it kind of cascades back. It ends up making a bubbling sound. So they're called bubblers. So I'm super curious about this one. What do y'all call about, or what do y'all call a group of people? If you're addressing like three to 20 people, what's the collective noun? It's you guys. I I feel like that's super contextual, but I will always either say y'all folks or everyone. Everyone's okay, but like Caroline said, three to twenty. I think twenty and over is everyone. (laughs) Okay, but Daisy, what's the contextual for like y'all folks or everyone? I the con uh the context is I say folks a lot more with folklorists or with people who get the kind of I don't know meta (laughs) folklore. They get what I they get that I'm making kind of like a joke about us or. And I did not grow up saying y'all. I think I grew up saying you guys, but then I've kind of changed it because, like, I don't know, it's more inclusive. Or at least it was pitched that way to me for so long that I just was like, yeah. Now I'm just going to say it. And so it just feels like natural to me. I, I, I noticed that I, I grew up saying, like, guys or kids or everyone. Yeah. Get over we, we grew up saying guys as well. And I've noticed over the last few, you see, there is, I've noticed over the last few years that I've said y'all more in my vernacular and I'm gonna 100% blame Caroline for that. Um, because, but I also, as a even as a Yankee, y'all is pretty good. I say y'all. I knew you were gonna blame me for that before you said you're gonna blame me for that. <laughs> blame Sorry. slash thank, like it's a, it's a thing. <laughs> I didn't mean to over talk you, uh, Caitlin. Oh, it's no worries. Um, yeah, I say y'all and then I use folks when I'm talking to other folklorists, or I'll actually use folks as like an inclusive term when I'm doing like customer servicey things at my library. So like, I'm approaching some kids that need to put their mask back on. I'll be like, hey folks, mask over your nose. Yeah. <laughs> I love those O's that you have. <laughs> That's uh. a, a nice O. Um, mm-hmm. I grew up saying you guys and um, in, like hearing you shouldn't use guys to address a group of people to be gender inclusive. I could not bring myself to say y'all because it felt like a put on um, at some mm-hmm. point. And I couldn't bring myself to say folks either because that felt like I was trying to like be a little bit more, I don't know, it just felt like too 
um, foreign to me to like, like do casually. So I started doing you all to like classes. I would say you all can send me this. And then somebody told me that it sounded really weird when I was saying that, like, what, like I think they were trying to say I should just be saying y'all. And so then I was like, I don't even know what to say anymore. So I just say you everyone <laughs> i will like <laughs> stop and like say an extra word because i'm too uh self-conscious about appropriating like the southern y'all because it's so cool sounding <laughs> i'm the same as i'm the same as anna i grew up saying uh you guys and i can't i, I don't know physically can't say y'all it just doesn't <laughs> vibe with me but i do say you all and like i said i lived in kentucky for a year and i feel like kentucky's this weird spot between guys and y'all where i heard like you all like there's an extra w in there like you all um mm -hmm. the uh trillbillies podcast which is out of eastern kentucky has a word for this thing anna and i are describing of like uh uh woke northerners who want to sound inclusive and start saying y'all in their 30s which are called y'all stars that's what they <laughs> call them what is the bubbly carbonated drink called? Ooh, so it's called it's called pop. Pop. Soda. It's soda. 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 Paul Bunyan and I say pop. Although everyone I know from Texas says but, Coke, so it's so well, weird. That's I have I have weird things about this. I grew up my my realest things that I said Coke. But then everyone kept asking me which Coke. So <laughs> what I started. Kind of coke? Right, so yeah. I, yeah. I got used to saying like the actual, like. So now I call it soda, but that's not my natural state. I just my, want to make that clear. <laughs> yeah, my yeah. My grandma <laughs> called it both. She, she used to call it soda pop. That's cute. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, so I think mine's definitely weird because when we moved to Ohio, I can remember my dad saying, "You're my sons aren't allowed to call it pop, okay? It's soda." <laughs> like he got very aggressive about being New Jersey. <laughs> I say pop, and I'm adamant that I I like have managed to like hold on to it uh, through the um, razzing from people when I moved to Pennsylvania. I remember the first time I was like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna like have a pop. And then the guy that I was with was just like, oh, you say pop? <laughs> and like, was just like, it was like, that, that it was like cool and weird. And then in California, obviously everyone says soda. I, I think in the Caroline, I think that it brings up something interesting with the idea of like, what's gonna carry over between if our, you know, our generation to next. And especially for a lot of some of us who are with partners from other parts of the country and continent. Um, my, my partner and I constantly have a battle about duck, duck, gray duck versus duck, duck, goose. Whoa. Gray <laughs> duck? What? Nobody said oh, that. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. Nobody what? said that's insane. I work at a no. duck museum and I've never heard of this. <laughs> Minnesota, we call it duck, duck, gray duck. You guys, okay, duck, duck, gray duck, right? Duck, duck, goose. You never played duck, duck, goose. Yeah, yeah. Duck, duck, duck goose. Yeah. yeah. The point is, it's a different bird, Jared. <laughs> yeah, we call it duck, duck, gray duck. You go so mallard, weird. mallard, widgeon. That's so no. It's a that's so bird. weird. Oh, wow. oh yeah, because you're all so normal. Yeah, no, I always so, thought it was because geese are like big and chase you. Also, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and they're gray, so maybe there's a something about that. And I would think being from Minnesota, with like ca the Canada goose being everywhere, but we call it gray duck. Jared, you know the relative size between a duck and a goose. <laughs> I grew up duck hunting and goose hunting. I know what the dimensions of a said critter. <laughs> But we call it that, and I'm I'm always teasing my partner that if we have kids, that I'm going to teach them that it's duck, duck, gray duck. That's a, no, oh, no, you're do not. That. Don't do that. Yeah, I'm gonna That's a crime that. against humanity. And she's We're on our team. Do not, do not Some ideas need, need to die to out. We all have We're very just, distinct right, accents, yes. and we uh -huh. bring that with dialects, and that makes learning about speaking in folk groups fun and exciting. Yeah. Don't, yeah, sure, you betcha, don't you know. <laughs> it was very fun to, to learn and speak with you all today. <laughs> um, thanks for watching. If you want more information about dialects, accents, check out the links in our description to other creators and scholars who have spent a lot of time discussing this stuff. We'll have so many links. So yeah. many. I've created a big list of links. <laughs> it's it's and, very uh, good. It's very good. Yeah, and let us know in the comments what exit you live off.
<laughs> and with that, and if you enjoyed our video, please like, comment, and subscribe for more. If you really liked it, hit the little bell for notifications. If you really, really like it, hop in the Discord and shit post with us. <laughs> yes. I was going to say, write us like a really long thing about how we're really wrong. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll read it. Daisy will read it. No, don't. <laughs>